what is a point of view in your field or industry that is considered gospel? It's considered such a truth that people don't even think about it that you disagree with strongly. And that's a really good starting place. But controversy is actually something that helped him um, get popular and um, a lot, a lot. Um, yeah. So w when we talk about what you have discovered during uh, writing your uh, your book, Michael, um, uh, is controversy uh, something that helps people uh, getting known, or are there any other uh, tricks, if I can call them like uh, like this? What are what are actually the results of your research? Well, I should say the way that I created this book was it was a mixture of the fact that I've now owned this agency based on these principles for close to 10 years and that that's my gut, you know, my sort of intuitive way of doing things. But I mixed it with real research. So what I did was I said, let me read about and interview people who I think are really good hype artists, many of whom are quote unquote bad figures because those people tend to get it naturally, even though these techniques are not inherently immoral. But I looked at propaganda artists. I looked at cult leaders. I looked at, but I also looked at rock managers. I looked at hip hop managers. I looked at pranksters. I looked at civil rights activists. And, and my, my kind of intellectual challenge, if you want to call something like this intellectual, is that I wanted to see were there things were there principles that I could distill that unified all of this? Or was it all over the map? Because if it was all over the map, there was nothing there. And I found out I would see the same patterns repeat over and over and over and over again. So it is, it, people come to it intuitively, but it is a real, there are psychological principles that work over and over again. So um, there are 12 that I, that I came up with. One of them that you're referring to is I call make war, not love. So people always say there's no such thing as bad publicity. That's not really true. There are certain kinds of bad publicity. So if you go out and make a really inappropriate joke on Twitter without thinking and it's perceived as racist, because right now racism is, for good reason, the cardinal sin of our time, but in the Victorian era, it might have been lewdness, you know? That's not good controversy. You're, you're just going to be seen as, as out of touch with the times or whatever. To me, it's about taking a bold stand for a reason, and it doesn't have to be against a person. It can be against an idea. So, like, for me... It was against a person, but I never trolled Gary Vaynerchuk. He stood for something that was the opposite of my approach. I believe in using systems. I believe in using principles. He believes in brute force, you know? So I wanted to make that point of view, but I never insulted his looks. I never insulted his voice. I never insulted his background. But you could just as easily pick a fight with, um, you know, just thinking of things David and I brainstormed about back when we would talk about this stuff a lot. Um, I think business coaching, not me, I'm just saying, you might say business coaching is a bad concept. I'm not saying that's true, but let's say you said that. Well, there's a million business coaches out there saying it's a good concept. What do you mean by that? What would you do instead? So it, it's a function of that, but it really needs to be who you are. It needs to be something you truly believe. So the question I always say is, what is a point of view in your field or industry that is considered gospel, it's considered such a truth that people don't even think about it that you disagree with strongly. And that's a really good starting place. Yeah, but the point you're making, Mike, is that it's it's a, a principle or an idea. It's not an individual's character. And it's not... Always. Right, yeah. right. It, 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 it's not how somebody um, looks or appears. It's, um, it, it's about their ideas. I think trolling... Forget about the fact that I think it's a, a, a jerky thing to do. I think it's actually not sophisticated. I think it can set you back. If you're out there saying, I and mean, you see people do this, they try to pick a fight like, hey, look at you, Frenchie. You've got a French name. What do you think you're doing coming on all fancy pants? You know, I mean, some stupid thing like that. That's just dumb and insulting, and everyone's going to think you're petty. You know what I mean? So people... People who are, I don't believe that, by the way. I was just coming up with the stupidest thing I could think of. But my point is, picking those kinds of fights and being a troll, that is not what I mean. And that's actually very ineffective. So what is an effective way to um, 
well, to, to make hype or to create hype. You mentioned propaganda artists. I, I, will, I, I would love to understand why you call them artists. I think that's, uh, that, that's a discussion in itself. What are the other ways, actually, to uh, become famous? Uh? And, and Mike, in the answer to this question, were there any that were particularly surprising to you? Any of these principles? Yeah, um, there, <clears throat> there were some. So one thing that I did expect was that being theatrical and dramatic would work. But, he, but there was an aspect to that that I didn't really expect, or being a trickster. So when I got into this and I thought of hype, I looked at the very obvious hype artists or thought about them like, um, I don't know, you know, Ryan Holiday, who started his career by spray painting his clients' billboards and then reporting it anonymously to the press to get attention, right? And a lot of people would say to that, well, I can't do stuff like that. I mean, that, that's, I'm, I mean that's great if you're in you know, a controversial field or, 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 or you're a musician, but I'm not going to do that sort of thing. So something I found really interesting was how a lot of times people who don't have access to traditional means of power, whether because they're beginning out in their career, starting out in their career and they're young, whether because they're of the of a race, religion, or creed, or sexual background that 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 isn't in the norm at the time, whether that's because they don't have money, whatever. A lot of times, the ways that the most savvy of those people will get ahead is by being a bit of a trickster, meaning they're not malicious and they actually add a little bit of color to the world with their tricks. But they break the rules. They they um they cause drama. They make people angry. They are colorful, whatever. But the thing that surprised me is the ones who really have long careers and survive. The minute they get into the mainstream, they find ways to shift out of the trickster role and become more legitimate. So like Ryan Holiday, when he he, he was a twenty one year old, super ambitious guy, he was already the head of marketing at American Apparel. And he pioneered, like, things he would do, he, he would, um, he hired Sasha Gray, who is a porn star, to pose naked in nothing but socks for a clothing company. Well, it's kind of funny, right? But very offensive. Um, and he would do these sorts of things. But now if you look at him, he's this ultra serious, he, he, he's the proponent of stoicism. You know, you could not get more straight ahead than that. He never really uses humor. He's very kind of upright in his speech. And the way he made that transition, he wrote a book called Trust Me, I'm Lying, where he basically said, my conscience has been nagging at me because I've taken advantage of this dynamics. Let me tell you what I did so that you're not fooled in the future. Now, never mind that people have been using his book as a Bible to fool the press ever since, but it allowed him to position himself as I'm leaving my wild and woolly past to the side. And you see this a lot, you know, it's even in music, the Beastie Boys started out doing this fight for your right to party stuff and getting banned from England. And by the time MCA died, he was the emissary to Tibet who like helped the Tibetan people gain freedom, right? So that was something that really surprised me. It's not enough to just be a prankster. That's how you turn into Dennis Rodman. If you do that your whole life, you have to know when to pivot and adjust and, and, and change your approach. 